What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. It's been a while since I've sat down with you guys and filled you in on how my side's going. So today we're going to be doing a round 18 team review. I'm going to be letting you guys know how I scored last week what trades I made, what my team's currently looking at, and also where I'm ranked going into the last five rounds of the season. So sit back and enjoy the video, guys. So without any mucking around, we're going to jump straight into the team, show you guys roughly uh, what my side's looking like, what trades I made. So if we take a look, firstly, I had a couple injuries to deal with. The first one being Lockie Whitfield, who was quite popular, and Oleg Markov. If you guys did see my trade guide last week, I did recommend that in most situations, people with Whitfield should be looking at a trade. I did follow that route. I went with Jake Lloyd as my replacement. I do think Jake Lloyd is the best value pick defender currently. I think he's still quite uniquely owned amongst top sides. So I think at his price, he was the best buy. He still is in my opinion, but that's who I went with. And then I took a huge risk with Tim Kelly. There was news during the week that he had tweaked his knee at training. He did leave training early and there was a big, big if whether or not he was going to actually get up and play. And being a Sunday game, it was a huge risk. I had Oleg Markov and I didn't really have any cash to, to move about. So I had to take a risk in someone that was in that cheaper price and Kelly was the only guy that I liked as a long-term proposition. I thought having Bramble on the bench who looks to have found a nice role at halfback, I thought if he scored well enough then I'd take the risk on Kelly and Bramble pumped out a 73 so I decided to go ahead and pick Kelly. If he did pull out last minute it wasn't the end of the world and I had a player that I was going to be happier with long term. So that's the way I decided to go. Fortunately, he did play and he did score well. So those were my trades last week. Quite happy with how that turned out. As for how I scored this week, it was my uh, best round, I do believe, this season so far. Not in terms of round ranking, but just score-wise. I do believe I scored... 23-12, yeah, there it is, 23-12, so solid score. Uh, some of my major positives would be Tom Phillips. I did loophole him just because he is very capable of scoring a, a 50 to 70 type score, and so I decided to loophole him off the bench, but a score of 98 was absolutely more than what I expected, so I can't complain with that. It is a concern that I do still have him at this stage of the year, but there are quite a few teams up there, even some of the top ranked sides that have rookies on the field and are dealing with these players that are capable of producing poorer scores. So I'm not too concerned with having him there. Another one's Dan Houston, major letdown. Look, at this stage, he's one that I want to get rid of as soon as possible. I think if you're in a position to get rid of him, I would be going up to an uber premium type. He just doesn't look like he's got a great role. He's finding it hard to get the ball. He's not tackling. So I think he still might have an issue with that shoulder. Uh, but for the most part, the rest of my team was super solid. Dugowie keeps getting it done with another huge score of 120. Probably the highlight for me this round was Matt Kennedy. I brought him in last week for a 74, but despite that poor score, I did recommend him in the trade guide as someone to still target. 
with no Patrick Cripps in the side, he spent 80% at CBAs and pumped out a huge 116. So he was definitely the highlight for me. Along with Clayton Oliver, 126. Look, I had McRae vice-captain and 90 from him just wasn't going to cut it. So I had to look elsewhere and in a round where it was pretty difficult to pick a captain, I opted to go with Clayton Oliver. He did have the easy matchup against Hawthorne and despite his recent poor scores uh, of high 90s, low 100 type, I thought we would see him bounce back. So I took a pretty big risk and chucked the C on him, but I was rewarded with a 126 score. So those were the positives from me this week. As someone that's been slowed down, I haven't been able to progress my side as well as I would have liked over the last few weeks. I've had a lot of injury carnage. Doherty, Duncan, Lockie Neal, uh, Markov, Whitfield, a lot of these guys. It's really halted my progress, but it was good to see that this round, I was able to escape a lot of the carnage. I don't have Dustin Martin. I don't have Sean Darcy, who's a query. I don't have Callum Mills, Toby Green. The only one I do have is Josh Kelly, who they're saying is more likely to play than not. I don't know how much I believe that at this stage, but he's the only one that I've really got that could potentially cause some kind of carnage for me. So that is refreshing. As for where I'm ranked, I'm currently sitting 342. So there you guys can see overall rank 342. I did have a look and I'm about 270 points behind 100th spot. So I think that I am well and truly in the hunt still over the next five rounds. That's only... 50 points around, so I think I can still climb my way up into the top 100, and especially with a lot of coaches struggling with carnage, injuries, that sort of thing, I think I could get a leg up, especially this week. Whilst I'm struggling for some of those top tier premiums like your Took Miller, Jack Steeles, Ollie Wines, these types of guys, I am reasonably happy with where my squad is at. It's definitely improved the last couple weeks coming out of some of that carnage I did experience post buys. I think I'm starting to get back on track now and this week, look, I'll give you guys a quick look into to what I'm looking to do this week with my side, but at this stage, I'm going to be trading Josh Kelly. I don't think he's going to play, but so at this stage, I'm looking to trade I'm probably looking at Andrew Gaff just because there's 140, 150k price difference there. I don't think Gaff is going to be much dissimilar to Kelly's scoring ability for the remainder of the season. I think West Coast is starting to get back on track. Gaff looked really good last week, so that's where I'm looking. That gives me the financial capabilities to go Riley O'Brien up to Brody Grundy. So I'm getting Grundy in, who will likely be my vice captain. Looking at who I have on the bench, I only have Hawthorne and Collingwood players. So for me to be able to do a loophole captain this week, I need to pick someone from the first couple games. And my best bet in doing so uh, looks like it's going to be Taylor Adams or Brody Grundy. So at this stage, I'll probably be going with Brody Grundy. He did pump out a huge score uh, against Port last time they met, 142, I do believe. He had a poor showing last week, so I'm expecting a bounce back there. So that's where I'll be looking. My backup captain will probably be Tom Mitchell, but I'll probably talk a little bit more about captains in my trade talk guide this week, as we go into the last five rounds of the year, these sort of things are a bit more important in trying to find unique ways in terms of gaining rank on other opposition coaches. So that's how I fared in round 18. That's how my side's currently looking, what I'm looking to do going into this week. 
For those of you that have enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a thumbs up, leave a comment below telling me what your trade plans are, what your side's looking like, where you're ranked, all that good AFL fantasy stuff. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy videos. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She